Oh, hi. Didn't see you there. Enjoying this wonderful pizza from Slice on Broadway, the people in Pittsburgh that provide good pizza to podcasters. Hey guys, it's the awesome cast number two for you for this March 17th, 2015. It is St. Patrick's Day, and this is the podcast where we get geeky talk tech, social media, and so much more from the local nerds and geeks that use this stuff. Fun times for the Jobby Talk for uh, in, in Pittsburgh, PA. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitters, and we got a couch full today. First of all, John Chichilla back in the studio. It's good to be back. How are you doing? All right. All right. And also with us, hey, there's a familiar face. You, a, you were on here before. I've been on here a few yeah, times. A couple of times. A couple of times. These uh, Doug Durga, Durda. Excuse me. Doug Durda. <laughs> <laughs> if you're out and about here on the live stream, should I drink that dot com is going to tell you how to get home. <laughs> <laughs> and Douglas Durda dot com, of course. How you doing, Doug? I'm doing wonderful. Thank you. And, uh, of course, uh, the, the Doug's here because we got into a little bit of daddy cast talk, you know, but Chilla was the only daddy. So it was a little weird. So we thought, like, oh, let's, let's let's get Doug in here. He's doing a lot of stuff. He's got on his great blog. He talks about a lot of stuff going on uh, that he's doing with his kids and everything. So I wanted to have a little bit of a longer conversation uh, along that line. But in the meantime, let's get some business done here. Uh, of course, you can find uh, more about us over at awesomecast.net. Um, you can find us on, on social media, on Twitter, Facebook. We have a fun, wonderful Facebook group where there's a lot of conversation happening uh, around all the stories we're posting throughout the week, as well as Google+. And please subscribe and rate us on YouTube, iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, uh, and tell your friends. Spread it around. We also have a Patreon at patreon.com slash awesomecast if you're digging the show. Um, if you like, get some value out of it. Show us, you know, throw us a little bit. Let's throw us a few pennies, something, whatever. Um, and we really, would really appreciate that. Um, you can also join us here live every Tuesday at live dot awesomecast.net you can join us in the chat room like these uh fine folks that are with us tonight like juggalo john like uh alex cars like uh, uh uh hot wheels and uh and everybody else that pops in there uh from week to week so um so with that let's get into our awesome things of the week i got the non-daddy one for this week actually this could work this could work a little bit um i went to applebee's this week guys <laughs> Was it good? <laughs> yes, What'd you I have? have? It was good. Uh, I was chicken penne something. Well, it was funny. It, it was actually uh, we went to Mad Max and Irma's, and for whatever reason, we, like we got sat and didn't see anybody for twenty minutes. Oh, I, I saw you. I think oh. you tweeted about that. Or did twenty you... minutes. That, that's, yeah. that's that's completely unacceptable at that point. Is that the Mad Max or Ma, uh, Max yeah, and Irma's? Max yeah, and yeah, yeah, yeah. Down by uh, Dukes. Uh, yeah, kind over like Green Tree Road. Yeah, area. yeah, yeah, over there. Wow, over there. I've never been in there before. But. I usually don't have a problem. It's usually just this day. I'm just like, hi, I'm too hungry. I'm not dealing with this. I just, I just got up and said to Denny's and like left. <laughs> and uh, but apparently somebody else too. But we went for there. We decided to, uh, well, I don't know, Denny's. Uh, let's go to Applebee's. We haven't been there too too often, right? And uh, we get there, and I find this piece of technology sitting right on our table um I, I i know i think we've had stories about this right that that this was coming in so there's this uh, little it's a bulky thing just sitting on the edge of the table and you can move it and everything and so it's pretty heavy right but it's basically an android tablet um you can order like you could go I actually went in and just immediately ordered an appetizer right off the bat um they have some games on there and you can actually pay through it there's a there's actually a credit card reader on the top and it'll it'll be like blue or green you know so they know you know what's going on there um so i went from like not being served for 20 minutes to like ordering an appetizer before they even took my drinks you know i it was just this kind of other side of of the equation and it was pretty cool to see that uh kind of happening so um you can't order your entire thing they just let you do appetizers and desserts but still it's kind of a step in the right direction and i more think i want this at a bar that you don't need to. I see. I see. Doug's thinking about that over <laughs> see, there. See, I want it at the bar, but I want it where it like fills fills your beer glass from from underneath. Like you <laughs> put your beer glass on the well, thing. Yeah, they you have the those. Button, you... They actually they have those at at some bars where it's I forget the type. It's basically they use it at like beer fest and everything where they set the glass down. It fills it up within like ten or fifteen seconds, and then they just keep going. That's how mm -hmm. they rotate the stock. But 
I'm thinking with bars that that'd be a great way as soon as you sit down to order your drink. See, that's how, and, and to get I, moving with it. I hate going to bars. I hate having to try to get the guy to get the drink, and and they're always the bartender. Like, yeah, the yeah the bartender. <laughs> I, I, you know what the bartender is, you know. I, but 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 still, you know, getting that attention, especially when it's busy down there, and maybe you have a few of these terminals along the way, and they blink. Hey, it came from this one over here. They at least they just go fill the orders say okay that came from terminal two you ask the five people around there hey which one of you is this thing and and there you go i was i was at a bar in philly and their whole beer list so none of their taps have labels on them there oh. are there are silver taps along the wall that's all they are and you you get it when you go in you get an ipad and it has it has that's safe <laughs> It, it has all of their beers that are on tap and how much of the beer is left. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> so like, it, like, you know, like you got to get their attention because there's like three glasses of that beer. That left. would that's be tremendous. Really nice. That'd be a trend for Bocktown because they just rotate their taps. Do yeah. you know how much is left in the tap or if you're getting a fresh keg or, or whatever? And, and I have a feeling there must be a sticker or something on, on the tap because like when I when when he when i ordered the drink he was looking where i was looking and they were numbered in the Ooh. system and i'm guessing on top of the tap where you can't see as a as a person sitting at the bar there must be numbers along the taps because That's they are switching them out mm -hmm. that they you, they're just looking at whatever you're looking at to figure out which number it is they go up there put the put the glass under it and i, I can't i think it might be motion like almost like like a a toilet at the arena where you get up and it automatically flushes, <laughs> but this is you put a glass under it and it automatically poured. Well, that's the same um, if you're ordering bud. <laughs> I digress. But so so it was it was a very up it, it was a very upscale bar that was doing this, but their iPads were all in Otter boxes and the the power and 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 home button were covered, so you couldn't reboot them or, or break them out of the app. It, but it was a it was a very cool experience, much like what you're what you had mm -hmm. um and i think i've seen that in the north hills at tgi fridays really i think they had the it, same type so i thing. haven't seen that at the at least the fridays around i guess i haven't i don't frequent fridays as much as i used to go to fridays a yeah. lot i had a lot of points built up down there but um but no, maybe it, it was an applebee's i can't remember it was on mcnight road it, but it had it had much the same terminal which mm -hmm. is very impressive Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's just, um, like you know, I remember we've heard, heard about these before, and it was just like, oh, great, now I don't need to deal with my server. But you still do. You still interact with them a bit. And there's a call your server button on there, too. Now, how well, does it signal the server? I don't They probably have some no. kind of pager. Yeah, they assume. probably have something or something in That's the back. Because, like, even, like, I went in and swiped the thing, and she came back in, like, 30 seconds. And, like, it, like, it was scary fast. She's like, oh, here you go. I'm like, I just, I just the okay so that's the applebee's that that's over in scott plaza or scott yeah township. yeah in scott township that's the one we usually go to i haven't been there in a while yeah i'm uh, gonna have to go check that out yeah. now when i look that's, at this that's neat. talking about kids you know kids are restless and they want food or they want something and i want to place that appetizer <laughs> right away or <laughs> yeah. i want to place the mac and cheese like right now right in fact right. as soon as we sit down at most restaurants we say we need mac and cheese. We need chicken fingers or whatever. It's for the kids. We know what they want already. And the server's usually like, okay, no problem. I'll yeah, hurry yeah. it up for you. <laughs> like you have a process, right? Yeah. So, I mean, yeah. And there's you do have to pay 99 cents. It looks like you have to pay 99 cents to have access to the games, period. Uh -huh. Which, it's a nice little it's a, upsell. It, it, it's no different than, what was the uh photo hunt and stuff yeah that they have oh wow well, that's even yeah. worse on those things yeah <laughs> so i mean for 99 cents that's a pretty good deal yeah that is that is and there's not i don't think there's <clears throat> it didn't look like they, they i like they looked like pretty general generic android game and you that's know, fine that you would have on a touch kind of thing like that so um i know I, I like seeing like I, I i like seeing this kind of integration and and it really did i think help the customer service again just coming off of a really really bad customer service experience like directly <laughs> so <laughs> so it's only one per table though right right so if you have two kids i have a feeling you could just, i will let you know just, what happens I, both my kids oh, so you're gonna experiment with this right? i will i'll take them yeah. down there this weekend if we have to because now i want to find I mean, out what I, happens. I feel like it's just like grabbing the ketchup off the other table i think you just snag one maybe <laughs> is it, but is it is it both aren't they both no no they're, they're they're 
they're, they're kind of you can move them like so can, because we walked in oh, and they're all lined up right your car they're all they're, <laughs> yeah, yeah um they're all facing in so you see the screen when you're walking down the down the aisle there uh on the end of the tables and so i'm like okay and i and like oh it moves because i'm like well maybe just the server just puts in your order right there or something but no it's not attached you, you move it around um and People used uh, to steal beer glasses now they're gonna start stealing <laughs> yeah yeah that's tablets. A thing. oh yeah you, you, everybody wants to take these home and start start hacking them and stuff right i mean i mean it, they, it's not a tablet you want it's heavy it's it's bulky <laughs> you know on purpose you know um you know, it's funny that you mentioned the the beer ordering uh back in oh jesus it must have been like 2000 2001 myself and two other guys were writing a program for the palm pilots for people to be able to do that yeah and we were trying to figure out logistically how we were going to do it but we couldn't get any bars that to test it like do a beta test with right and then uh, the other issue that we ran into was if it would work with the registers and how we would get a printer to work for it, work with it. We're like, look, we just want to get the signal working right now. But like at the time, everyone's like, oh, technology. We don't want to mess with that. <laughs> well, also with a bar, so like Y2K died. is going to break everything. But I, still have, <laughs> I still have my Palm Pilot in my mm-hmm. basement, so it's probably on there somewhere. <laughs> if I can find a charger to boot the thing. I have the Tungsten T, uh, the silver slide out one. Oh, wow. I got, I got this pocket color, PC color that screen. you left here, Chilla. I have one of those too. I've been wanting to dig on this. We, we actually, I was working with a place down on the south side, and they actually were using pocket PC to, to do the same type of thing. It was a hookah bar. It was like Windows CE or something mm-hmm. that's on that. <laughs> pocket PC. <laughs> wow. I, yeah, I still have my. I have the, the dock for it too, if you need to plug it in or anything. Oh, this, this, he has the yeah, dock. He, no, he, he, he the gave sleds. me the dock and everything. No, <laughs> no. Chilla brought this. With a compact Chilla, flash Chilla, sled Chilla was, and a PCMCIA sled. And, wow. He was emptying like <laughs> all the tech out of his basement the last time I moved or something, right? Yeah, it was out of and the, it was just like I had, I actually got rid of, like I just left one and just got rid of the rest of it because I'm like, I'm just going to let it sit there because I'm not even sure if it boots up. I think it does, honest. but I think you have to slide the thing on the bottom and hit the button and... And, and, and you have and to charge your, it up rub first. Rub your tummy and, and pat your head on this thing while you're at it. Yeah. Uh, it's got a... Wait. wait. Oh, no. oh, it doesn't have the, the... Stylus. Stylus, actually. So I might throw that out with the other one. So, no, I, 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 I grabbed the one that looked like the most complete. <laughs> <laughs> so it's just, uh, just sitting on the dock in my menagerie of technology and uh, the beeper I found before the holidays. <laughs> That's nice. nice apparently nice is from Purple. My, yeah, yeah. Um, I hated so, beepers. So what I'm interested in, to your point though, Skip is that. even if they don't allow you to order your meal mm-hmm. from the tablet, let let the waitress or waiter or whoever have a tablet that they can get that order back to the kitchen mm-hmm. while they're taking the order. So they're taking it there. They're not transposing it because that's where the problems happen. Yes. Oh, I forgot to put in your cheese sticks. Oh, I forgot this. Yeah. You know, and, and, you know, they wrote it down on whatever shorthand they're doing. You know, because mm-hmm. um, that was always my problem when I was a waiter was like I couldn't write wrong uh, fast enough. You know, to mm-hmm. get it. It's like okay, okay, what was that again? No, no, oh, okay, okay. Like I was, I couldn't get that down. I was only a waiter for like six months. Yeah, it's a good thing I left. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, you know, it, it, it's it. I can see that. I, I can see that. Or even like having it where I loved when we did the cafe. We had square and everything was a button. You mm-hmm. just had to find it. The worst thing was like, oh, where did we put the. Co- this coffee ad or something like that mm-hmm. that's the worst thing but if you're there on a regular basis you're going to know that right and it's going to be like mcdonald's where like everything's a picture or something right um that makes sense um yeah i, I could see that being a little easier you know what this is going to be really cool for with the restaurants too is they can reduce their how much they're spending on print for their menus mm-hmm. if they have everything on their night you can have really nice visuals on there plus you can also build your meals probably see what you're going to spend ahead of time although some places don't want you to to know that but it they can it i mean they can up these uh, yeah <laughs> they can update these things on the fly mm-hmm. which is going to save them some money but also if they want to work in things like i i'm big on my fitness pal i'm always sitting there wasting time looking stuff up i mean it's honestly i think more people would appreciate if they could see how many calories are in each of their meals or whatever and they could just start building their meals that way i mean granted it's not made for every restaurant but like i geek out when i look at chipotle's website because i'm like ooh. Okay, what meal am I going to plan for today? Now I can just order it right away. Right. So well, the put cold- that, oh, sorry. God. So put that on a tablet, and I think that would be that that make it faster too for decision making. Well, uh, do do something with my fit, create a partnership with my fitness pal where there's a QR code, and you go into my fitness pal, and it lets you scan right from what you 
ordered on the tablet and it scans it right into my fitness pal. That would save me a lot of time too. Mm -hmm. But you got to standardize that all that too. So well, I guess I usually guess, QR codes are just a bunch of a stream of some kind of numbers and data that the, that the endpoint understands, it can, right? It could generate it. On, it can generate it on the fly. Though. Yeah. So if you, if you did come up with a standard for calorie count in a QR code, and then My Fitness Pal and whatever other app, Fitbit apps and everything else, mm -hmm. would then just understand whatever the comma delimited format was for. Calorie intake, fat, mm -hmm. and, and whatnot. So my fitness pal, if you're watching right now, <laughs> we have an idea for you. Um, so uh, we're also getting Alex in the uh, in the chat from California is telling us that Stacked also uh, does something similar to this. Um, and actually, if you go to the site, the first thing you see is an iPad, and and it looks like this is kind of their terminal. Um, and I think they just kind of take, yeah, they just kind of take you through the interface, don't they? Oh. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, again, another one, and I don't know how big, the, actually it looks like there's like, uh, four or five locations out there in the, in, in California. Um, but, uh, yeah, uh, more progressive. I, I mean, Applebee's is the biggest chain I've seen, right? Um, and I, I mean, McDonald's has had, you know, the tap pay, it's no surprise they have you know, Apple pay or anything like that. They're not that progressive. Um, but, uh, they're just, you know, everywhere. So they're going to be on that, that kind of stuff. Applebee's gets a lot of heat too for, for their, I guess for being a fast foodish kind of restaurant. Like uh, have, it's, not having it's like that chain restaurant. Yeah. thing. I shouldn't not, say fast food, but yeah, chain. yeah, yeah. I like Applebee's. Yeah. A lot of people dog it too, but I get decent meals. Mm hmm. I have good service most of the time that I'm there. They put up with my kids, which is fantastic because I usually don't want to when we're out to eat. But no, it's like we have a good experience at Applebee's. And people are like, I can't believe you'd eat that stuff. Well, you know what? If I go anywhere else, I'm going to eat like that too. They just Most you know local restaurants put a bunch of sodium in your food too. Yeah, Whatever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I enjoy my experience at Applebee's and I know what I'm going to get because it's the same at each of them. Yeah. So I have an expectation that's already going to be met. That's the biggest thing. That's, that's always killed me when we're on our honeymoon. We're in like Toronto and I'm like, oh, let's just do McDonald's over there. I was like, we're in Canada. Eat something Canadian, <laughs> please. You, you know? have poutine at the, at the uh, McDonald's up there? <laughs> I don't think so. I don't think so. Um, but anyways. Burger King did. Oh, did they? Yeah. I no, I didn't see any like, what, but again, I avoided that kind of stuff except for when you had like rest stops and stuff like that. But um I don't know. I, I was just excited because the pizza place was called Pizza Pizza, <laughs> which I was reminded of because I was watching the last WrestleMania from Canada. And then like that was a show sponsor was Pizza Pizza. And I'm like, what? It's Little Caesars? No, it's just called Pizza Pizza. And it's, I don't think it's affiliated with Little uh, Caesars going to sue somebody. <laughs> it's international, technically, <laughs> you know. Um, so now we got enough about. Yes, I'm talking about you, Canadian upstairs. Uh, I got a text for my wife. Um so uh awesome things of the week uh chilla what do you got so i'm i'm gonna loop back to a long time trade ago mm -hmm. google glass and and and, <gasps> and as far as the, the the talking about being a dad um it's funny because i took the google glass and and used it for pretty much a day nice um not necessarily from the aspect of notifications and all that kind of stuff i did make a couple phone calls on it it worked well for that <clears throat> um but I took a bunch of videos of Christopher and the glass was perfect because it wasn't something that he wanted to try to reach for like a phone typically. Um, and the other interesting thing that I learned along the way was Google Glass, when you plug it into something, shows up as a camera. So if you plug it into your Mac, iPhotos launches and it, you can pull in all the pictures and all the video. Mm -hmm. um, I did set it up where it auto synchronized all the photos um, to my phone. The one thing that it doesn't synchronize is video, which surprised me. Um, but well, merely plugging it into pretty much any laptop, whether it be Windows based mm -hmm. or Mac based, you can quickly pull the files off like you would any camera. Even better, I can plug it directly into the camera connector kit on my iPad and then pull all the video into iMovie. Dude, I and then that's what I did. That's what I did for that robot video when I was in Canada mm -hmm. or not Canada, San Francisco. And like it worked like a freaking dream. I loved it. Yeah. I, like I, I'm like, I got a use out of this camera kit finally. <laughs> that there there were a couple times where it it 
got a little laggy with the video. Now they were they were some one minute, two minute videos. Mm -hmm. um, and it would like almost pause and then keep recording. Um, hmm. And it's something you could probably actually if you got in there and trimmed out the pause, you mm -hmm. probably wouldn't notice it because it was like a, it was almost like it was buffering the video. Um, obviously, I'm probably not going to get an update to patch that, but um, I will say all in all, the audio quality was great. The video quality was pretty darn good for a small camera attached to the side of my head. Um, in fact, I then took the video and then forwarded it off to a bunch of family members and they were like, did you have your phone taped to your forehead or what was going on? Because the quality was good and it left me hands free to mm -hmm. like throw him up in the air and to do a bunch of stuff around the house. Oh, that's and awesome. we got kind of like his first steps, his first real oh, steps. Cool. Yeah. So, I mean, it couldn't, it, it couldn't have gone much better. That, um, that alone. So that, that to me is what makes the device so worth it. Mm -hmm. Um, I did get, the glasses, the actual the actual rims, the actual rims. Um, I've been wearing contacts with them. They come with glass glass in them. They're obviously not prescription. Right. Um, you can get them prescription filled, but you do have to go to very specific um, places to get the lenses. So the, uh, like were there places locally or were so you there was a place there was a place away? in Mount Lebanon. There of was a place. And shady side, like there was a place in all the high end areas. Yeah, and it was one of those the things places where, where you're going to be able to pick up an Apple Watch Gold. Yes. <laughs> um, so you can't go to like IT or no, not that I, not that <laughs> America's I'm, best. Yeah, you're not going to America's <laughs> best. You're not getting two for seventy nine dollars. No, no, no. Um, and you can't get the other thing that was interesting is you can't get the frames anywhere other than direct from Google. They mm. ship you the frames, and then you have to go get the lenses swapped out. Wow, that's a process. Yeah, yeah. It's, so it's so not it easy. was one of those things. That's what where, kept me from doing it so long. It was one of those things where I want to have, even though obviously I have it has the the camera piece on the side. I feel more comfortable with glasses on mm -hmm. than I would have with just the rim. So it, it it's one of those things where it made sense for me to get the glasses, um, to also mount that that piece on the side. But I don't know if I'm going to take the time and spend the money to get the lenses prescribed. Um, I will say that the case that the glasses come in, like the actual lens glasses come in, it's about uh, probably four inches thick and probably about, I don't know, almost a square foot in size. That actually you, because the, the lenses don't, the sides don't fold. Mm -hmm. So you have to have a case wow. that fits your this, glasses this is not, with this, Google Glass on the side. They, did, this. they didn't design this for people that wear glasses. No, they didn't. <laughs> like, absolutely not. <laughs> like, the, the thing, that it would be, uh, I can't even find something. Like, whatever that plastic case is over there. Oh, the microphone case? The microphone case? Yeah. Like, that's the size of the glasses case. <laughs> oh, wow. Don't get me wrong. It's beautiful. There's inside the <laughs> glass. Like the size, like, maybe the superpowers box. Or... It's a that's beautiful, cool, unwieldy uh, size case. It's actually probably a little smaller than the super WrestleMania. The WrestleMania box, box set? <laughs> <laughs> um, but in, inside there, they have a screwdriver to take... To, to mount and unmount your Google Glass from the glasses. I mean, they have... Mm -hmm. it's, it's really nice. They have a place to put the <laughs> USB charger. It, it's just big. But but like I said, it, to me, it, it made... Just having all that video, and I think I'll continue to use it. Mm -hmm. um, the one thing I will probably do sparingly is connect it to another device, whether it be Wi-Fi or whatever. Um, just from the aspect of... I would rather get longer battery life out of it, and I'm not using it necessarily as much for the connectivity aspect. Um, I will say the automatic syncing to Google Plus is really, really nice as well because it mm -hmm. gives gets all those photos and video backed up. Um, but the fact that it works and mounts to any device just like a camera from a file copy perspective, I, I, I actually Googled and anticipated that I was going to need to do some kind of crazy magic to get the video off of there because the photos came off so easily. 
um, and synchronized, but being able to mount it just like a camera to any any PC, tablet, whatever made made a huge because difference. In it really, I mean, that. it really just acts like any other Android device, right? Yes, because that's all it is. I mean, well, it, and when you say it acts like any other Android device, which <laughs> Android device? Because when you plug in a Samsung device, it prompts you and says, do you want this to be this type of connection or this type of connection? And you mm -hmm. need to load keys and please get the Android software and blah, 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 blah. That's blah, right. Blah, I blah. didn't I didn't need yeah. to get an Android connection software. It just goes in iPhoto. So that's actually really nice. Yes. So mm. like there's a bunch of different there's a depending on what. So I have a Nexus 7 and I have a Samsung Galaxy S3 mm -hmm. and. When you connect them, you get different options, right. so it's not I, I. And I would go Nexus over anything else, at least as far as I know today, I'm interested in seeing what the S, S the Samsung Galaxy S6 brings to the table, but um, I would probably go Motorola or or some type of Nexus line, but. Mm -hmm. the, the whoever designed the glass connectivity, it was brilliant. It worked. It was easy. Um, it mount like I said, it mounted the DSIM folder just like you would any other camera card. Mm -hmm. um, it, how how are you? So you really kind of just word around for a day. You see, you weren't using notifications. How are you doing adapting to that interface? I'm fine with it. And mm -hmm. in fact, Carla actually put it on. She found it pretty intuitive mm -hmm. um i don't think it's something that she would wear for a prolonged period of time as well i did get, I, I was surprised even from her i got a little bit of you know are you taping me or i i see the screen on are you videotape like like she was all skeptical it's, it's interesting to see who gets paranoid with this thing and, I, I would get, and i'm like yeah, i'm not I, even I recording right yeah. now so i don't want to see what the big deal is and she's yeah. i you're lying she says i see the screen on in there and i'm like <laughs> no i'm watching tv right <laughs> just now just <laughs> because i have the screen on doesn't mean i'm you recording. could be doing anything in yeah there. so and i said here try it on and she was like oh this is pretty cool um she's not a huge gadget geek like myself but i think she could see the use in it mm -hmm. um of course then i said give it back to me because i want to play with it but <laughs> <laughs> um i would say that i would i try to wear it once a week once every other week at least for like a half a day to make sure i'm getting video of christopher as he grows up and i'll continue to do that so this is going to be more of a recreational device for you yes okay. not, it's not going to be a daily driver no um but especially at this age He's in the very I want whatever you're holding phase. So uh, so like taking video yeah. with my phone, I get maybe a three second clip before it's his eyeball in, in the screen and he's trying to grab. It's the, ooh, the what do you have there? Right. Yeah. And he's actually to the point now where I don't even know why I did this, but. Well, it's to save our own sanity, but he now has an <laughs> iPhone five. Oh, jeez. <laughs> that he has PBS kids on and a couple other things. Um, I've had a couple people say, you know, aren't you worried about his eyes? I'm like, I'm worried about his eyes. It's not like we sit him down in front of the phone for the next eight hours and walk right, away. Right. Um, it's in small doses. A lot of time it's actually just sitting there on the floor playing music and he's dancing around. Um, sometimes he will grab it. We'll put it in we use the guided mode and the, the parental controls so you can't leave the app and you can actually draw circles on the screen where they're not allowed to press oh, oh nice. really yeah it's in guided access on the okay. on ios um so you turn on guided access and it, you've set a four digit pin and when you set the four digit pin you can turn on guided access at any point in time by triple clicking on the home button um, it then says guided access is on and it gives you options to draw circles or draw squares on the screen where you don't want you don't want them to be able to press. It then blocks that area of the screen and you hit start. Once you hit start, the app is running and it, it will not let you leave the app unless you triple click the home button again and type back in the four digit pin. The other thing that occurs is so PBS kids, there's a there's a there's a thing that you can drag out from the lower left hand corner. Mm -hmm. that is like all stuff oh, yeah. that you have to pay for or whatever and it's kind of useless for him yeah so i drew a circle around that and he can't oh, he nice. can't drag it out so the only thing he has access to is play pause and the video selector on the right hand side um now so this is also something probably handy and probably something our, our friend rob uses for 
like dis, uh, uh, displays at, at, uh, Di- at, so at conferences. Dis- displays at conferences. So here's the trick to that, right? So yeah. if well, once he gets older mm-hmm. and knows that you can hold down the power in the home button to reboot the device, mm-hmm. you're now <laughs> out of guided access mode. <laughs> um, things for Rob were, are probably more like using Apple Configurator and putting in, putting the device in what's called it's- supervised and single app mode, mm-hmm. which... Mm-hmm. You can a- you can actually plug an iOS device in and say, put this in supervision mode, supervised mode, and I only want this app to be able to run. And right, the device right. will actually launch that app, and, and that's all that can I've run. I've noticed when we went to Comic Con, like some stuff I'd see, they just cover the home button. They cover the home button, yeah, yeah. which is the the, the hardware, right? Kind of. Re- we we tried that at work, and and we found out that later on that that there was a certain area that because we were trying to use guided access mode because supervised mode you have to plug in so if we ship a device off and then they want to update you can't update the app without bringing it back taking it out of supervision <laughs> mode blah, right. blah 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 apple's working on that but um so we we were using guided access but we said you have to use these cases mm-hmm. so their workaround for the cases is when they get the device in the case, they take the device out of the case they take a power drill they drill through the home button <laughs> now they have plastic shards where the home button is so they have to carry around popsicle sticks so they can hit the home button i'm like (laughs) the whole point was so you couldn't break out a guided access mode unless you took it out of the case and we got you cases that it was removable from but also could be locked into a kiosk type right module these these were more for consumers to be using right like when they just want to use an ipad right so, but from a, from a, I, I would say from a parental control perspective, if you're watching your kid yeah. and you're aware of what he do, he, what they, he or she might be doing it, I couldn't imagine a better, better oh. way of doing it. The Android devices, Samsung lets you hide a lot of the apps and you have to hit like the special section of the, the screen. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's different from device to device. It's when different you get from Android, device to device. Unfortunately. Yeah. I actually have the, uh, so we have We've gone through two Samsung tablets already <laughs> because the screens have cracked. They're not very durable. And now we're onto a Kindle Fire, which we bought like the Super Gorilla case to go around it. So that thing's not breaking. But with the uh, the other two, there is an app called, uh, I think it's Kids Place or Children's Place. Mm-hmm. And it's similar. You can't draw areas around, but you pick which apps you want to have available so that when the tablet boots up, it'll only show like those those apps. Okay. Mm-hmm. So when we got one for Teaspoon, he was he started in on them when he was I think two or three. He actually started in on the wife's um, iPhone four, and then we said let's get him a tablet and see what happens. And he just rocked the tablet. I mean, he he was playing PBS Kids and ABC Mouse and all these things, and that's when we locked it down. And then eventually he figured out what code we were using because he was <laughs> he would watch our fingers, mm-hmm. and we're not even thinking. How about, was he? At the time, he was by that point he was probably three. So two and a half, three, and now he's six. So now we, now it's, yeah, we have to come up with some weird combinations for him because he's, he's pretty sharp with it. But it's, it was one of those that we didn't expect him to watch our finger moment, you know, mm-hmm. movements on the screen. Mm-hmm. He figured out how to unlock it. Next thing I know, he's in YouTube, watching videos. Then <laughs> <laughs> that's going to be kind of the rat race there. I want to get a little bit more of that in your awesome thinking the moment, but we do have to. Uh, uh, hey, you guys are enjoying the wonderful pizza from our friends at Slice on Broadway. I got, where did it go? I got, I got, Is let's there? see. <clears throat> Slice on Broadway, I got some copy. Actually, I got the menu. So uh, so I can remember what all they have down there. Uh, this is awesome stuff. Like Doug, you're, you're a frequenter of I am. Slice on Broadway. What do you usually get down there? Oh, wow. Do you need the menu for a refresher? Well, I'm trying to think. Of, I, we've been changing it up. I know. Lately. I think I haven't you picked up the margarita here and there, uh, some Big Lou. No. Oh wow! And I'm bra- I can't believe I'm brain farting right now. Which one I usually Is get? It a frisky Billy Goat. No, it's the name- Guido. No, the Gonzo. Gonzo. Thank you. It was the Gonzo, which is not on the menu. Oh, well, because here's the great thing that they do at Slice is if mm-hmm. they have it as a hoagie, they will make it into a pizza for you. Mm-hmm. And I asked them about that once, and they said, "Sure. What do you want?" I'm like, no, oh, give me the Gonzo. Next thing I know, it's, I believe it's on the menu down in uh, Carnegie. Is it? I think it is. Because <laughs> I would order that thing all the time. And recently, we've started to switch it up because, like, all right, I get that all the time. Let's let's try some of their other pies. And, oh, my God, yeah. It's, in fact, for uh, both kids' birthdays this year, all we did was load up on Slice. 
I noticed um, somebody here uh, had a little bit of fun the other night with Slice. Uh, if I can load up this picture here, the party of one picture. You're, that was me. Wait, wait. That was just. This is wait, wait. This is what you do. This is what you were telling us about. <laughs> I did that. Before. I my sister was my sister and her boyfriend. Okay. Whatever, but but yes, it, it is nothing, and it, this is really really sad. And <laughs> Carl, I don't think is often happy when this when this occurs. But what you probably can't see is. So there's three pizzas there, mm -hmm. and there's three hoagies on the end, and an order of breadsticks for four people. <laughs> <laughs> because you look at their menu, and yeah. everything is so looks sounds so good, and it tastes it so good. And it's one of those things where it's like, okay, well, I don't care if anyone else wants slaughterhouse. I want slaughterhouse, so we're getting a slaughterhouse. And then someone says. I want the Athena, and, and, and two other people say there's four of us. Keep in mind, ah, I'm not in the mood for the Athena. I want the Athena is a white pizza topped with fresh baby spinach, fresh tomatoes, and crumbled feta cheese. Our tribute to the goddess of good pizza. Yeah. These descriptions are amazing on here, by <laughs> See, the way. This is this go. is the problem that we go through. My <laughs> wife wants the margarita. I want the Gonzo. The kids want the naked pizza, which is you get a cheese pizza and you take the cheese off of it, so, but the cheese has to cook on the pizza. And you take the cheese off, so they get all the grease and everything on it, and then we've got this big mound of cheese sitting in the middle of a box. So we have to get almost three pizzas for our entire yes. family for four kids, oh, well, four people. In fact, so then Carla decided, you know, I want to try a hoagie, so then she got the, I think she just got the chicken, it's like a chicken bacon something or other. Um, so now I have to pick that up on the way home tonight. <laughs> So now I'm going to get the the stuffed hot pepper hoagie, nice. which now I'm interested. Stuffed hot pe pepper hoagie as a pizza. Would they have really well, good. they have stuffed banana oh, pepper pizza as well. The and, stuffed hot yeah. pepper, they, I actually had it when they debuted it down in uh, Carnegie. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Right? It was like right after they opened, I went down there. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I got to try mm -hmm. this because they talked about it. It was, good. It was it, really good. This, the hoagie is phenomenal. And you're talking about like depending on how fresh they are, the potency of the peppers. Mm -hmm. I had it for lunch oh, when they I'm came out. Right again. Let me grab another slice here. Uh, um, <laughs> but no, go check them out. Sliceonbroadway.com. And I got their social media links on here now. PGH, PGH, underscore, under, PGH underscore Slice, of course. Uh, and they're also Slice on Broadway all together on Instagram as well. You can find Slice on Broadway on Facebook. Go tell them that we are talking them up down here and how crazy Chile is. For grabbing all the pizzas <laughs> and and everything. That's what we should do. We should try to plan some kind of party, and we'll just order one of every pizza. <laughs> we kind of do that. That in wouldn't person. be hard to do. When we have pizza pal night, that's usually what ends we up end happening. Up like like there's like eight of us, and we order like six pizzas. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, but everybody shares is the cool thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We're just like, well, yeah. let me let me get some of that one down there. You know, I mean, it's like a it's like a Sunday dinner. That we have, we we haven't been a while since we've done that. I think we're gonna have. I to think we're gonna have to do that. Hmm. We're gonna have to move cheap. We're, we're gonna have to move the diet cheat day in order to do that. <laughs> so, um, but anyways, go check them out. Sliceonbroadway.com. Real good stuff. Real good pizza. Fresh, local, award winning. What time are they open till? <laughs> I don't know. Okay. I, uh, it's on the. It's like the menu. Is it, oh, hey, I have a menu. That's why I was asking you because I figured you had the menu. I don't know. I'm not used to. Uh, information would be 8, 8 p.m. No, that's Sunday. Uh, 10 p.m. Okay, cool. 10 p.m. You, you got plenty of time. So, bow back to daddy. Anyway, wait, and, and they have a new logo, too, by the way. Yes, I have to update the logo. Actually, their site's not updated with the logo. So Their <laughs> Facebook is, but Their not Facebook their... is. Oh, yeah. look at that. Yeah, check that out. Because their website's not. They're mm. all trendy. It's high flu. I'll get it here. I but, like uh, but no, they, I think... Uh, whoa, just opened a browser. Hello. Um... So while I'm fixing that, uh, tell me, what is your awesome thing of the week, Doug? Well, mine isn't dad-related. Uh-oh. It was going to be, but then something happened today around 4 o'clock. Facebook came out with an announcement, which I think it's kind of awesome, but not because I'm not a big fan of Facebook, but it's mm -hmm. something kind of cool they're starting. So through Messenger now, you can send money to somebody else on Facebook. Oh, no. The social media tech guy in me is thinking of all these issues that we could run into with the fact that people's accounts get hacked all the time because they click links that they shouldn't be. Yes. So what's going to happen when they go into Messenger and add, you know, John Smith as their friend and then ship a bunch of money over? 
There's going to be people trolling libraries just looking for people that yeah. have logged into Facebook. So it's uh, now, Grant, Facebook has not come out and said all the details behind the security with it, but it's as simple as you start a message with a friend, you click on the dollar icon, and then you just tap pay. So you put in the money amount and then you hit pay. Jeez. But so, so I don't have a card hooked up. Well, that you have to hook up a Mastercard to, or Visa with it. Okay, is the thing. Do Sorry. a lot of people do a lot of people have that set up? I mean, I, I don't know if you it's do not set up yet. I, I'm not going to set it up. I okay. I hate Messenger, but they were saying like, hey, I just I bought tickets for the concert. How much were they? Twenty bucks. Okay, here you go. And then boom, it's in your account. Can I set this up to sell my digital downloads through Facebook Messenger? I wouldn't see why not. Like I could see, think of. But a you're gonna, you're now gonna have to answer back every message. Oh, the answer back every. Yeah, it yeah. doesn't automate the process is the thing. But I'm wondering what I'm trying to think of is ways to lower the barrier for the person on the other. You would end. be able to do that. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, find some way to print a receipt, or just so they have it. Uh, well, they kind of have it in Messenger. So and well, as long I, as you have it, someone as long as somebody has a copy of the message, right. And the funds Cause, clear, right? Because I'm seeing, I'm seeing uh, in in this uh, example they're showing, like uh, I don't know if you guys, you probably can't see on the monitor over there, uh, but you guys should probably see if you're on full video. But there's like a little completed sent on this date. I'm sure there's a place you can go and see all your transactions in Facebook at a certain point. So then, then you would have all your receipt for everything. Mm-hmm. So and, and that just happens there. And I would hope this kind of still links through and maybe you get an email or something on top of that. So. The one thing I don't see those. Facebook has to be getting some kind of money out of this. There has to be some kind of service fee, I would think, like PayPal, where you have mm-hmm. to pay you know, so much of a percent of your transactions. Or are they grabbing it back somehow? Did they partner with? If you're saying it's only Mastercard and Visa, did they? That's possible. Are they getting a, a, a cut of their? Well, it, yeah, and the other thing is, okay, so are, that's what Apple did. Are they doing it? Because the thing is, that there's a deal on the back end with, with that. Like mm-hmm. you don't pay the credit card fees when you swipe your card at McDonald's. Right, right. McDonald's pays. That McDonald's pays for that. So, yeah, it has to be. Maybe they're getting a kick back. Well, what? Okay, wait. Or, or are they just going ahead and paying the fee to Mastercard and Visa so they have more functionality in their site? So more people use it. it yeah. So more people use it. I mean, yeah, I mean, it, this, this came out. At, this came out at like four this afternoon. Yeah. Our time when I saw it, I'm like, oh my god, there's my awesome thing of the day. <laughs> So, now, here's what would be interesting is if they then turn this into, and this is where I'm wondering what, what's going to happen happen to the financial institutions. Mm-hmm. So I can take my money and I can put it in an iTunes account and I can take it and I can put it in a Google account mm-hmm. out of my typical bank account. And I have all these funds sitting in all these different things. When does it get to the point where I can store, keep my money in Facebook and I, do, I don't have to link it to a MasterCard or a Visa. That's true. Yeah, down the road, that's probably what I, I Facebook would... bank. <laughs> wow, that's not scary. <laughs> I'm terrified of Google Wallet. I can't think about Facebook bank. But I, I, I look at that as, and I think it's something people, I, I almost feel like we're getting into the reverse of the credit card. So I have, I have a MasterCard and I have a Visa and I have X amount of debt running on these two cards and I pay them monthly. Now it's okay. I have a, I have my Facebook bank account. I have my Google wallet bank account. I have my iTunes bank account and I can use my Apple watch to pay at McDonald's with my actual Apple account. So my money's coming out of iTunes because my mom gave me a gift card for five bu- or for fifteen dollars, and I want to go buy a Big Mac instead of an app. Apple's still yeah. getting a cut right. of, mm-hmm. of my my payment. Mm-hmm. At, that's at, probably at what's going to end up happening. Uh, so th- that's where I'm. I'm interested to see th- how this all plays out. Agree. This is only tied to people with if it's tied to a U.S. bank. Right. Okay. For for now. For now. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we, I mean, well, we could you imagine? I need to. I need to switch my money to rupees. I'm paying. I'm paying you in rupees with my American <laughs> well, so they, dollar. Yeah, because uh, then there's foreign exchange involved. And, but that will be cool though if you are selling to somebody like even up in Canada or wherever. If like Sorg selling his DVDs, that's a great way that you would be if it can do the convert. You know the mm-hmm. currency. That's how I do that. I, I sell DVDs and and digital to 
Japan, Denmark, uh, Australia, I've, I've, I've sent to, I think Canada, it just deals with that. You know, PayPal deals with that. PayPal and I, and they're like, that. oh, yeah, you got like it. It basically like you hit the button, which says, uh, you know, nine ninety nine in the U.S. Mm-hmm. And they pay whatever the heck that is over there. Like the conversion is just done. I see nine ninety nine U.S. That's it. And they just do the rest of it. Paybook by Facebook. Hmm. From Alex in the chat. Paybook by Paybook by Facebook. Facebook. There you go. But the, the other thing, though, too, is it, it could take up to one to three days for the payment to go through. On the other end. So if I'm sending you money, it could take you up to three days to get it. Mm-hmm. It shows transfer on my end is automatic, but it's just like PayPal. It could take a couple days for it to get in your account. Right. Right. But this this will be great, especially for Shireman when uh, he needs to collect on Yin's team. And <laughs> yeah. And, and we, yeah. He's like, just send it to me right now. You guys are standing here. Send it to me right now. <laughs> <laughs> we can already kind of do that with our as connected as all of us are. Where's bump for payment? I, I wasn't there one for a minute. Oh, that'd be bad because I'd, I'd bump up against somebody I wasn't paying attention to. That's right. Okay, yeah. Remember when we tested that and we had like four people and we bumped somebody across the room at the at the meet and greet? <laughs> uh, yeah, we don't want to do that. So, but th- there is a lot of potential in this. I mean, it's I, I didn't hear a word of this coming up. Mm-hmm. So seeing this come across the news bar, I was like, you've got to be kidding me. How they were able to keep this quiet, I have no idea. Well, I think that's one thing that's, that's doing Facebook a lot of good, at least on their app side, is the monthly update. I, I, I see a lot of other companies, even Apple gets kind of stuck in, in the, the issue of, especially during betas, that they have to pre-inject code that they're going to use later and just not expose the buttons. And then someone figures out, reads through reads through the, the gotcha. inform, reads through the back end code to find it. Facebook's now in this mentality of, you know what, we're not going to do a quarterly update or an every six month update. We're giving you monthly. So I think it gives, they they don't have to put or leak out as much of this type of stuff and they can keep it behind a locked door. And then because they're already in the mindset of a monthly code Mm -hmm. drop, it, it allows them to move quieter and faster. Well, you know, and we're on the heels too of their, their big developer conferences coming up in about a week or so. You know this is going to be the th- they're going to be talking about it there too. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm, I'm kind of surprised they didn't wait till then, but this is getting buzz going into the event, saying, "Okay, you know, Mark's going to come out and talk about what we can do with this app now." Well, they, you famous. could go. They could go after Etsy. Ooh. So you create you create your own page where your marketplace right. where you're selling your stuff, and you click you click on it and you message the person the money. I mean, they they could they could go after a lot of different tech, a lot of different companies. That they could completely blow them out of the water. I I, I wouldn't. I, I don't think they could touch eBay right now. But like your Etsy's and other companies like that, I could definitely see them trying to go after the the click to buy world. Mm-hmm. I, mean, I don't think they're going to open up a, a bookstore like Amazon or, or iBook or, or open up media sales, but I could see people selling other people content and physical goods. So moving from that, I wanted to continue our conversation from before uh, a little bit. Uh, Doug, you know, you're 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 kind of a daddy blogger. <laughs> you, you you dive into some yeah, things uh, here and there on on, on your uh, blog at Douglas Durga, Douglas Durga dot com. Um, so what are you know uh, you know we talked a little bit about how you're dealing with uh, their devices and 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 how much uh, uh, you're you know letting them have screen time. Um, what and and we talked about like kind of this idea. You you sent a link over um, about. You know, everybody having, you know, these kids are, are growing up with this stuff, whereas we kind of developed into it. Right. What are you kind of observing so far uh, with your kids? At the, and, and again, for, remind people how old your your uh, boys are. My oldest son is six and my youngest is four. So Teaspoon is six and Cheeseburger is four. <laughs> and that's the name that my youngest insists on going by is Cheeseburger. And I don't know why. <laughs> so, I, so. I, I named a dog Popsicle when I was like seven so <laughs> so you know what i i just kind of stick with it i'm like all right whatever cheese is your, your name's cheeseburger we're going with cheeseburger and he, the funny thing is he doesn't even eat cheeseburgers mm-hmm. um it, it's 
it was tough at first figuring out what to do because I, I didn't really know what to do and there wasn't a lot of studies out there about what to do with with screen time or anything um what we decided on was 30 minutes max a day mm-hmm. uh, just to see what was going on now unless there was school assignments because my my oldest is in uh kindergarten now and he was in preschool and they they did have a few teachers would say go to you know abc mouse or whatever so we would we try to do it to a half hour um and sometimes yeah it, it is very easy to have that as the babysitter mm-hmm because over, last year I was a stay-at-home dad, so there was times I had to get stuff done. Here, kid, play with the tablet because it's raining outside, and you know, TV I had the TV off. So play with your tablet. So it was a really easy babysitter. Um, I don't regret doing that. I regret the fact that he became obsessed with Bruno Mars. <laughs> <laughs> there must be something about that because Christopher loves it because we throw Vivo on that. Yeah, that's what we do. And yeah. on the TV, and that's like his favorite video is, is Bruno Mars. But so anyway. he watches Bruno Mars. He watches. I swear, I have a tween girl because he also <laughs> watches Katy Perry. He watches um, Taylor Swift. Pharrell. Hmm. Uh, no Taylor Swift. No, Daddy watches Taylor Swift. But. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but no, it's like he watches all the pop songs that are out there, right. and then he also gets. Like, we'll go to the library, and he'll. He'll take out the the CDs that are like, you know, kids sing number 12 and they sing the popular songs. He's very much into like entertaining. And mm-hmm. and the other cool thing, too, from having all this access to tablets and technology is he's really interested in recording audio. Oh, that's so, cool. So I sit down with our with my mixer because he knows I have the podcast mm-hmm. and he sees me talking into it. So I've taught him how to use the mixer, a really high level, how to do that. How does that um, like at what point did he realize uh, that he's recording something that like, or does he realize you're recording something that other people are? are... I don't know if he realizes mm-hmm. exactly like the extent of, of what I do with it. He knows that I talk and somebody's listening, but he doesn't really know much more about it mm-hmm. um yeah there's a there's a great shot of him in front of the microphone actually <laughs> and he'll i sit- love the spider-man headphones <laughs> what's great with these headphones mm-hmm. is they're made for kids so that the decibel level doesn't get too high oh nice so no matter how high he cranks up his tablet it's never getting higher than <laughs> nice. the safety level but what i've noticed with it though too is and from the tablet and from the recording is it's it's kind of unlocking like this creativity in him mm-hmm. and he sets up concerts up in his room now He's like, well, Daddy, I need the lighting over here, and I need the microphone here, and I need the camera here. Nice. And I, so I, I have video of this that I, I don't put up on YouTube because he's, he doesn't like wearing shirts either. <laughs> so I just, I watch him every once in a while, and he's like, okay, what do I, you know, how do I do this? And he's got one of my old microphones. We'll sing into it. Mm-hmm. So he wants to know the whole process, and he comes up with concerts and and does all this stuff, which I think is great. And it all started because he had access to the technology to watch people sing, and. Uh, like for instance, they learned the Star Spangled Banner in school this week. So now he's looking up videos on YouTube on how you know different ways that people are singing the song. Oh, that's really oh. cool. So I was like, all right, that that's pretty neat. But then also, he loves his Netflix. Everyone in my family is obsessed with Netflix because we are cord cutters. Mm-hmm. And even my four year old, my four year old loves Woody Woodpecker. He loves the old Bugs Bunny. He loves Tom and Jerry. He loves Garfield, and uh, and Ninjago. That's the other big one. The That's family. the Lego one? Yeah, Lego Ninjas. Yeah. So he watches those. and then, But Teaspoon will watch all the kids' shows. Like, there's a Richie Rich series now, like live action Richie Rich. Anything where there's kids performing. Mm-hmm. So he loves, like, Air Bud. Like, the whole Air... Oh, God, I can't stand the whole Air Bud series, but we have them on VHS, and we watch them on Netflix. But anything with kids in it, and if there's, like, music in it. So the plus to all this technology is it's really bringing out like a creative musical side to him, which is it's fun to watch. Mm-hmm. It's, that's, that's really cool. And that's one thing I think before Christopher gets too old, we'll be back to cord cutting. So I look forward to that. I don't want him to get into the habit of channel, channel, channel. They were obsessed with cable when we had it. And mm-hmm. since we've gotten rid of it, they know they have a restricted time on Netflix and like, that's it. See, I remember, you know, I had three channels, right? You know, which I, Probably most of us did yeah. growing up for the most part, right? And, and I, for me, it was, I remember just sitting there and watching whatever was on, unfortunately, like current affair and crap like that, right? Because <laughs> that's all that was on. It was 
somehow Lacey. yeah it, whatever <laughs> was in reruns i watched like all of night court you know um but uh you know but but still just just taking that in like i i, I remember you know again you know being completely obsessed with, with with that kind of thing now do you see now now i always thought like you know one of the nice things about having like netflix is you're also not exposing them to all those commercials and all the cereal commercials and the toys and stuff, right? Well, does that seem to, or is that is that true? We like, still get that changed? on. We have Sling TV. Okay. So the not the the Dish Network box, but the Dish Network internet service. Okay. Or internet streaming TV. So they still see commercials on there. Okay. And the downside of that is we have well Disney's not too bad, but there's Cartoon Network, which kills me because they have they've always got commercials for stuff on there. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's a couple other like kids programming, which is, is, is Disney fine. still, I, I recall Disney only having commercials for their own stuff. Pretty much. Like it's still, it's still that way. Really? But Disney has like commercials for like the one day that I had it on. The, and I, I mean, we don't have it on that often, but there was, I think it was Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And I was actually in, like, Oh, this would be cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. it was a bunch of like, almost like as seen on TV, kids toys. Like they had this. Hmm. soccer puck that you could kick across the carpet but it was like a like it was a bunch of like to me gimmicky toys but not necessarily that you could run out to toys r us and get it was more like like, call this 900 number yeah yeah. they have ties to disney like disney's got their hands in this off market that's that's probably selling stuff so it's still like their own they are dictating those they're not just selling space like they're still so the kids still see commercials and it and we do watch over the air too. So I mean, it's we're, when we're watching like Big Bang Theory and stuff like that. Right, you get all the. It's not stuff. so much kids stuff that they're seeing on there. Right, but, but it's not like it, it's not like you know sitting in front of Cartoon Network or or that Saturday morning spot like we used to have. No, it's not. It's nothing like that. I don't think there. I don't think that even exists. No, it anymore. doesn't. It really it doesn't. doesn't. There's. It's it's no. str- actually there's a lot of educational programming over the air. I know. Like we do a lot of we do a lot of PBS. Yeah, a lot of Sprout. Yeah, a lot of the Sprout stuff. But even like on NBC, like there is a sort of Saturday morning block, but it's all that stuff with the EI stuff in the in mm-hmm. the corner. And even yeah. um, Cubo is the other over the air. That mm-hmm. if That's you guys, if you watch. if anybody gets uh, eye on it, I think another yeah, market is the it's same way. Yeah, it, if you get eye on, which is basically USA Light. <laughs> basically <laughs> yeah it is That's though because yeah. it has like psych from like season three and and it had monk for a while and then it has like flashpoint criminal minds and uh, something else on there too you know uh and, and that's it and they'll just like run that all day and that's it you know i love cubo because after midnight they used to have a block they'll run an hour of he-man an hour of she yeah an I hour remember of, uh the old ghostbusters not the real ghostbusters like the mm. original not the movie ghostbusters like it was just it was just four hours of filmation but it, they, they took that away so well, I have no, no no reason for it i anymore. worry i worry more and christopher's 11 months old so what what do i know but <laughs> watching him with the phone you can see him be like okay i've had enough of this and then tap and he knows to tap somewhere on the right and it's going to change the video mm-hmm. that's he can put that much together but i worry is it going to be one of those things where his attention span is going he's going to expect like youtube two minute clips of something and that's going to be as far as his attention span goes. Mm-hmm. Where I'd be much happier with something. Obviously, not right. at, at, at he's not even. So you're worried yet, about the ultra MTV generationization of him yes. watching YouTube. Like he, yeah. he's gonna, he's not gonna have the attention span for anything that spans more than a minute and a half. Although, how many, especially at that age, how many kids? Have right, that? and I agree. But are we are we ex- extending that? with a youtube generation because i hear people now with their their teenagers that it's nice that to me it's nice that they don't want to just sit and plop down in front of the tv and just stare at the tv and nothing else and it's like the world moves around them Mm -hmm. but i wonder i hear more and more like they're they're all just watching these small segments and they don't have it's almost like a lot of teenagers today don't have the ability to sit there for more than or to to pay attention to something for more than three minutes and this is what we're kind of misconstruing as add yes and it's like no we, that's just how they you've learn. trained them that's how we learn <laughs> right. we learn to pay attention now as, yeah. as kids well, and, I, and i see it too in some of the people i talk to at work they're like 
you get you get past minute three with them and they're like you're you're losing I used to have managers like that that were like that it's after you get past like a minute or a minute and a half all of a sudden their eyes are kind of floating around yeah yeah, uh uh-huh okay yeah Uh uh-huh yeah sure okay and i'm like i've already lost you Mm -hmm. but it's i've noticed with my kids too is that if something doesn't load right away like netflix on the roku stick is miserable it it takes forever to load i'm even impatient with it it just Mm -hmm. sits there and compared to when i did on chromecast chromecast it flies roku stick it takes longer my kids go can you fix it i gotta wait i'm like (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I understand, but you have to wait for it to load. And then once their show loads, it takes a few seconds for it to load again. And then they just, they get impatient with it. They want it right away. So they, don't, they don't even want that. Yeah. It's, wow. But, but that's part of the culture though with this, like with mm-hmm. everyone watching six second videos on Vine and, you know, 15 or 16 on Instagram, we well, want them to have again, it right away. Versus the idea that the biggest thing that I found was we watch a half hour show or 22 minutes was on Netflix if it was a half hour show. Right. Mm-hmm. And then it's like, Okay, now we gotta pick the next thing, or we have to click on the next thing. You know, we have to decide on the next thing to watch, right? Depending on what it is. If we we didn't have, you know, before we had these. Oh, we can just sit here and binge on this and let it go to the next video. Like we went from the oh, we watch this and maybe we flip a channel after a couple, you know, shows or whatever. You know, I don't have to decide what's next. To now, I have to make a decision. Now I have to make an action. I can't just sit here, you know. And now mm-hmm. they're they're coming from the other direction. It's interesting. Well, we were one funny thing that happened is uh, so my youngest was watching Woody Woodpecker last night. It's we gave him he's been sick off and on, so you know we gave him some medicine. He's laying on the couch, and he was just staring at the TV, and it popped up on the screen that said, "Are you still watching?" Mm-hmm. Click OK. Yeah. Or click play. And I looked at him like, "You still watching?" Uh huh. <laughs> but he's just staring at the TV, and there's nothing on there but that that screen. <laughs> I'm like, how's the show? Uh huh, I like it. I'm like, there's nothing on. What was of, he? Look, he's look. He wasn't he was look, like playing or something. No, he, was just he, looking, was just... he was like zoned. I walked him. I went, hey, hey, and, hey. and is he able to read it? Yeah, like he knows what's going. On. He's like, where's the remote? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh, you're gonna be my stoner. <laughs> you're just gonna lay on the couch like on a Saturday afternoon. He's like, what's up? Uh huh. Change that for me. <laughs> But I mean that that's one of the that's one of the things that, that bothers me with technology though is, is right. the, the attention span of kids and I think that is part of the short attention span problem a lot of people have is they're used to having it now I want it now if you can't give me what I want I'm going to leave here I'm going to go somewhere that I can get it because I don't have time to wait for you because my time's too valuable and they're going to go off and do something else mm-hmm. hmm. but I mean on you know flip side too when they're in school my kids have. My six-year-old has computer time. He's in a computer lab during the day. Right. And he learns Spanish. So, <laughs> well, How much can you really he's, complain? He's learning more than I probably and, and did in college. And that's the other thing. I, you know, is, is, is he, are we, we're training him, we're afraid we're training him for this attention span thing, but are we also, how far ahead are they now because of this technology and their oh my God. He, ability to, yeah, their their ability to, to, to take in information versus, you know, what they used to be. When he was in preschool last year, he was reading at almost a first grade level. Mm-hmm. And he went in there and he's like, here's how you use a computer teacher and would show him. Because I would teach him how to use the laptop and, and everything. I'm like, well, you need to have these skills. And then I go and see these other kids. And I realize, okay, maybe their parents aren't spending time with them. Like, of course my kid's going to know how to use a computer. I use a computer all the time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But other kids were like, uh it's a mouse. We, you know, I re- he's like, no, you click here, you click there, you right click on this. And- maybe, maybe the closest thing is I remember taking computer class and you know, typing class. It was on Apple IIe's. They upgraded that year to a blazing fast Pentium 133 Windows machines. Awesome. Um, but Do they still have typing stuff like. For- I, I wonder I about that. Like I Matt, that's the other Matt question too. Speaking- oh my goodness! I used to sell that at Staples. <laughs> I do remember. It's the same photo all the time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Of that lady Beacon. on the front. <laughs> there was a Mavis Beacon joke in that Kelly Schmidt or uh, Kimmy Schmidt uh, Netflix show, actually. Mm. Um, but uh, I forgot where I was going with that. <laughs> Sorry. So. Oh, no. I remember I struggled with it. You know, I struggled with typing. But then I remember like one summer or something, I realized, oh, crap, I know how to type. Because guess what we're doing? ICQ. 
uh, you know, we were chatting and it, and it was in, I had a girlfriend and she was on the internet kind of. And, and, and all of a sudden I was like, Oh wait, I got this, you know, like it's kind of slid right into place versus, you know, struggling that entire year of computer. Maybe we only had half a year of computer class, right? Like that's when it clicked for me. And it was that outside thing. It wasn't just a thing I did for an hour a day. I don't know, Tuesdays and Thursdays, maybe it was right. Mm -hmm. Like it became how I do things, you know, and Hey, look at us today. Right. So well, yeah, I, I wonder when I went that. to college. I, I had never touched a computer when mm -hmm. I went to college. Oh, no, I take that back. When I was in grade school, I used an Apple IIe, but I didn't think much of it. My friends had a Commodore 64. When I went into college, I had no intention of, of using computers. I was like, whatever. I didn't care. You originally went for, <laughs> we were, I was sitting down to figuring this out with one of my coworkers the other day. Cause I actually had like five different majors. Oh, okay. Over my time at Pitt. But it, it started as um, psychology. Yeah. I'm like, all right, whatever. I don't, I don't need computers. Computers are stupid. <laughs> <laughs> and then my RA said, I want to show you something. And he was a he was a comp sci major. Mm -hmm. He's like, I want to show you this. He brings me into his room, and he's got AOL 1.5, I think. <laughs> I'm like, all right, this is kind of cool. And then I get introduced to the school email system. And was next that thing, Pine back then? So we were on Unix and we were on VMS. I was using Pine. <laughs> These are, I apologize. I apologize to yeah. some of you guys on this. I, I don't even understand half of what he just said. I, I got to <laughs> be honest. <laughs> well, so the next thing I know, like after my, my first semester, I'm sitting down with programming books. I'm like, this is the greatest thing in the world because mm -hmm. I got, I got an email from a girl I didn't know at another pit campus. Ended up being like somebody else's friend. And I'm like, somebody just sent me this message that I don't know. I want to find out more about it. And then something just clicked. Next thing I know, I'm spending <laughs> days in our computer center on MUDs. I'm on <laughs> I'm going through Gopher to look up other schools. I'm I'm doing everything I can. I just and I got sucked in. And that's what I'm seeing with these kids is once they once they make a connection with somebody somewhere else, mm -hmm. you're sucked right in. Mm -hmm. Well, that's something I mean, uh, you know, again. And I Gr totally dated myself with all that that you just said. <laughs> Growing up, we we were connected. Like I, I always say, like you know, I see this with, and actually, let's let's touch on this topic, and then we'll we'll have to close up here. So the, we're getting the video games on, uh, guys on for a boss battle. But um, I look at my nephew just graduated this past year uh, from high school, and you know, high school for us ended when we left, right? It ended when we left for the day and went home and we didn't have to worry about it anymore other than us just worrying about what was happening the next day or whatever, right? For them, that all the crap or positive or whatever that happens in the hallways now happens on Facebook. And it's a constant thing. And that's why bullying is such a big problem right now because it doesn't end anymore. There's no, if you're being social, there's no hiding from it anymore on these platforms. Uh, what do you guys think, you know, being in this age, looking forward, who knows what, facebook is going to look like in you know well you know you know sooner for you doug of course but you know for you like probably 10 years from now uh chilla you know i mean what preparation are you doing for that because i mean we we all like discovered at these points or discovered like the um oh i can chat room with somebody you know mm -hmm. in high school for some of us and, and everything versus they're just like oh I, it's nothing for me to connect to so and so you know, uh, grandma in, in, in half a country away or, or whatever the case may be. I have no clue what it's going to be like by then. <laughs> a and B, I, I, I guess I look at it as I hope that I do a good, good enough job parenting to teach right, right from wrong. Mm -hmm. And that leads him in the direction I guess he needs to go. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. That is something that makes me a little nervous is like the cyber bullying and things that go on. And it's to me, it's like one of those touchy subjects of how do you deal with it? Because do you want to be the parent that has to traipse off to the school all the time? And then are you actually getting backing out of the school system? I don't. I can't even. I can't even fathom how I'm going to handle it. So I, uh, I'll cross. <laughs> you got that. a while. You got a while <laughs> yeah. to figure. It I got out. a while to figure yeah. it out, and hopefully Facebook Doug, has Doug, something. Doug, it's a little out more. It's a little more soon for yeah. you. Uh, well, especially since my my oldest is in kindergarten, and I mean next year my my youngest is going to start in preschool in the same school. Mm -hmm. uh, and I know that he gets my oldest gets picked on now. I mean it's it happens. 
yeah. all kids get picked on. And yeah. it's, it's little things, too. Like, he's getting picked on right now because of his last name. And they say, oh, <laughs> you're dirtball. You know, it, it's it's little things. Like, I got that when I was his age, too. It's just, like, it's something that rhymes with a last name. So that's what they call you. And I told him, like, I was like, you know what you do? You look at him and say, I don't have time for this. And it worked. Like, he said to somebody <laughs> on the bus, she started calling him dirtball. And the bus driver was telling me, he goes, your son looked at her and said, I don't have time for this. And turned around. <laughs> he's See, like, and that's the, awesome. And he's like, that's and, amazing. And, and, and the girl just looked at him and went, what? <laughs> like, that was, he just sat there. So, like, so like that was, that was like, I, I high five myself for that one night when I told my wife too. <laughs> but, um, I, as like a, I guess as a daddy blogger, I am worried about, you know, what's going to happen because I did put his life online. Mm hmm. Not mm-hmm. on the line, but I put his life online. I mean, from the, the and, moment he was born, like I, I right. live tweeted what happened because he was a preemie. He was in the NICU for 28 days. Mm-hmm. You know, he and, was severely underweight. And we have we have friends, mommy bloggers, Bird yeah. Baby, for instance. I mean, that kid has been <laughs> her entire life is online. Yeah, and, and th- I had talked to her before about this. All of us have talked at one point, like, what do we do when, when it's time? Because it's going to come time to pull the plug eventually. What do we do? Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. everyone has a backup plan, and I, you know, I really don't want to get rid of a lot of this because when he gets older, I want him to see what it was like when he was growing up. Yeah, we've yeah. had kick it's, ass it's memories. Ba- it's the baby book. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I've I've been very careful about what get like what pictures I post. So there's nothing that would be like embarrassing for him. Right. Like we go, we went to Ghostbusters, and we went to like the the monster truck show last year and stuff yeah, like, yeah. like stuff like that's fine. But I also know how people can be about photos. So, like, yeah. there are photos of him as a kid. So, what's that going to do to him? Yeah. Or maybe when they get older, no one cares. Yeah. Like, I guess, uh, to me, it'll be one of those things. Yeah. Is anyone really going to care? Because it's probably going to be every other kid out there has. Yes. Yeah. There, there's a lot of. along those lines. And, 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 and a lot of other yeah. kids out there will have parents that have done worse things on Facebook. You know, yeah, and yeah. I'd be that's more, the other thing. Yeah, that's the other thing about what's going to happen when your kid gets to look at your Facebook from what you did in college. <laughs> <laughs> my well, my kids pretty much know about my beer show, so I I'm fine with that. Right, and, right, right. But it's been the, toned down. But I eventually, yeah, they're going to eventually see. they're going to be like, Daddy, why did you dress as a priest? And because <laughs> it was part of the it's a, it was a character on a show. Right, right, right. I get away with that, but I there, but there's other things why, too. Where it's why like, does you know, Uncle Brad say eat a bullet? <laughs> <laughs> we don't talk about Uncle Brad anymore. <laughs> Uncle Brad, I don't know what you're talking about. Actually, we go. Uh, we just went out to visit him recently, and he went in the house, and like Brad still has all this stuff there. And he's like, "All right, it's just it, it's Uncle Brad." So yeah, I I think it's we're looking at this as what the the past has been like for us, and not what these kids are probably going to grow up with in the future. Like they're not going to care. Mm-hmm. They they probably won't care. My kids are going to look at pictures and be like, "Yeah, whatever. It, it's not a big deal." I just, I'm concerned because I, you know, as a parent, I want to be protective. I don't want them to get bullied. I know it's going to happen, mm-hmm. but also I, but you don't want to contribute to it. Right. I don't want to contribute to it, but also I think kids growing up are going to have thicker skins than we did. I definitely, they're going to have to, yeah. I mean, that's just one of those yeah. things. It's you're going to have to toughen them up. Wow. So we're going with the toughening up strategy. <laughs> I, I mean, that's what it comes down to. And as long as you, you guys were saying, you know, Chili, you're saying about, you know, I hope I raise them right to do this. I think the thing is people now that are kind of the half, the people that didn't grow up with this versus now it's here and it kind of came suddenly and they can't keep up. It's like those lessons, they don't see as needing to be transposed or they're more mm-hmm. challenging now, right? Uh, that, that you have to kind of connect. Like I, I'm, you know, me, I... I always say I think the answer is education as far as the social media, you know, and mm-hmm. unfortunately like the parents need to too. The the I think it's gonna be persistent in the schools to the point where it's just gonna be part of everything. You're not gonna have a Facebook social media class like they have a computer class, but I think it's just gonna be a general conversation that happens in there just um uh, what do they call them? Just like the, what are, what are the like not that they have class or ethics or something like that, but there's always like an element of this is how you do manners, like especially mm-hmm. in like kindergarten or something, right? Well, it'd just be like social etiquette. Yeah, yeah, and, and and you know, so it'll be like, hey, don't talk to strangers on the street. By the way, don't do that on Facebook either. You right. know, like like that's going to be just a, a an extension of the conversation. It just it's just unfortunate some of the parents just are not as kept up as some of the kids, and well, it's and scary I think to that's, them. I think that's where I think it's even more important to teach the right from wrong theory because for me. 
sooner or later, they're going to figure out a way around whatever roadblock you put in front of them, whether mm-hmm. it's they mm-hmm. figure out the pin or they figure out how to reboot the device or they they're just going to figure out a way to get around whatever obstacle yeah, you put gonna, in front of them. And so it's going to be down to them teaching them right from wrong right, to me is right. way more important than and it's going to be down to them looking at the thing and say, oh, this is a place I'm not supposed to be. Oh, this is exciting. Or <laughs> ooh, maybe, hmm. you know, I mean, I know I was a uh, let's see. Let's see what we can do with yeah, this. You know, I mean, I, I push the envelope and I'm like thankful so much. I didn't have the access that I do now. Mm. You know, I you know, I couldn't even imagine. And uh, but, uh, but but I tell my kids, I'm like, don't be a knucklehead. There yeah, you that, go. That's the best way to put it. <laughs> don't be a knucklehead. And there's times where Teaspoon has done something. Like I said, I will say, like, don't pick up that that box right there. Picks it up. Why'd you pick it up? I don't know. I just I, I want to see what's in it. I I'm curious. I'm like, that's great to be curious. But you also have to know when to do something and when not to do something. Mm-hmm. And he's young enough where, you know, thankfully, I, I'm starting to teach him that. But. Yeah, it's just, it, I mean, it's going to get crazy out there. And it's all we could do is, I mean, we can guide them, but we can't hold their hand because that just makes a whole bad generation come about. Awesome. Well, hey, uh, great conversation. I, I, I know we could go forever on this kind of stuff, and I hope we have more opportunities to, to continue this conversation. Um, I'm gonna, I know when I have kids, uh, finally, I will be coming to you guys. Um <laughs> Uh, but, uh, in the meantime, Hey, I want to hit up real, real quick and we got to get out of here so we can talk some video games. Well, we have so much stuff happening in the area around Pittsburgh. Uh, so, uh, first of all, uh, oh, that's from before this weekend, uh, down at the hardware store on uh, Saturday, March 21st, uh, go to meetup.com under the tech meetup for Pittsburgh PA. Uh, they're having Google analytics foundations. I believe it's like 1250. I know one of the people involved with the TEDx Pittsburgh, uh, I think is attached to that. Uh, one of them I'm signed up with the tech meetups mailing list. Uh, Doug, I know you're into that kind of stuff. I'm kind of kind of thinking about dropping by if I can. Um, also, PGH 365, March 28th. I think I got that date right from our friends at uh, Pittsburgh's AIGA. Pittsburgh.aiga.org. And uh, there should be something listed there under the events. Also, Tech Shop PGH, um, they are going to be doing the Mix It Up Uprise Networking event uh, with Next Pittsburgh. If you don't follow nextpittsburgh.com, they have fantastic tech and community articles about Pittsburgh. It's it's a really good play, uh, uh, thing going on there. Uh, if you don't mind missing our broadcast, it's Tuesday, March 24th at Alpha Lab Gear. Great space down there in East Liberty. Really cool. Right by the Target. It's Sounds it's better than that sounds. I'll I'll put it that way. Um, at five thirty, go check that out. At um, I don't know where they have it. Oh, actually, nextpittsburgh.com has it all over the place. Uh, TEDx Pittsburgh was announced. I think April thirtieth is the date. They're having a call for speakers. I already sent out poked somebody to get nominated. Uh, that I think should talk. The theme is bridges this week or this year. Sorry. Uh, if you have somebody in the community doing something cool, go t- check out. It's, it used to be TEDx Grandview Avenue. I don't think they've ever actually held it on Grandview Avenue. Now it's TEDx Pittsburgh. <laughs> so go check that out. I believe it's tedxpittsburgh.com.org. Uh, Epicast. Uh, I think we've mentioned it before. I, I got to talk with those guys a lot down at um, PodCamp Pittsburgh. Uh, they're actually doing a uh, Drinking Partners podcast live. It's going to be March 18th. Uh, go over. Uh, there was a really weird ticking site that I never heard of before. Um, but uh, Purple you- Pass? Per, yeah, it's Purple Pass. I've never heard of that one before. Neither I. But um, they got go go look up Epicast, uh, a e e p i cast, um, and you'll find stuff, and they'll have links, I'm sure, for that as well. Create Festival by the Tech, uh, Pittsburgh Technology Council is coming up in June, the 10th through the 12th. This sounds interesting. Um, they're going to have speakers, they're going to have workshops and uh, parties, all kinds of other stuff. I'm really excited to see what this is going to be. Uh, it's in the heart of Pittsburgh's Three Rivers Arts Festival as well, downtown Pittsburgh. Um, so you can find information at that at pghtech.org. <gasps> so much going on. <laughs> so much going on. I'm tweeting this as much as I can from the awesome cast account and, of course, uh, PodCamp Pittsburgh's accounts as well to try to keep everybody in the know there. Yes, I'm trying to keep the PodCamp Pittsburgh account going. We got some stuff coming up, so we're, cool. we're working on. So um, I'm hoping we can announce something soon. Um, oh, hey, friend of the show, John Chamberlain, keynote for PodCamp Pittsburgh, yajagoff.com. There, I'm so sad. There's like everything is happening this time. We're going to be Meadville for, for a wrestling show this night um, working. Um at the RK Comedy Theater, which I got to go check out Sister Sorella 
um, a few weeks ago and filmed for them. Uh, really cool place. They got some arcades in the in the in the lobby. It's really awesome. Um, but they April 11th, they're going to do a live improv show based around his book Above the Fries um, from the block. So uh, go check that out. Uh, more, t- uh, more details and ticket information uh, should be up, if not currently, very soon at yajagoff.com. Um, and I think that's everything. Mini awesome, awesome cast for this week. We talked about a lot of cool stuff, including Meerkat, Nintendo's mobile and NX console news, which I'm sure we'll probably bring up here on Boss Battle, what's insertcointobegin.com, Hootsuite suggestions app, Amazon exclusives, a lot of Kickstarters and stuff. Um, a lot of fun stuff we're doing over there. Please subscribe to that. Hey, I'm showing you my notes. I didn't even realize that. Um, <laughs> at awesomecast.net, you can subscribe to the YouTube and the uh, iTunes feed for the mini awesome cast and get those four days a week on top of this show. <sighs> We're recorded a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Need some oxygen. I have so much to do, and we gotta we get need to, to the pre-record next show. this and put it in. And you post. Need a can of air. <laughs> Doug, air. give me a breather. Doug, he's at the right side of this couch. No, <laughs> DouglasDurda.com. You can find me on the Twitters at DouglasDurda. It's a protected account, so I gotta approve you first. Or you can listen to my podcast. Should I drink that? Dot com. Or at SIDT. It's also a video show, so I guess you could watch that Using too. Using Google Hangout over there. Yeah, I talk about beer. <laughs> Chilla, he's at Chilla on the Twitters. Yep, and John Chilla on Facebook. Awesome, awesome. You'll, you'll uh, follow him on Twitter for pizza pictures. Yes, for what? much pizza. I'll probably have some tonight because i got to pick some up on the way mm-hmm, home. Mm-hmm. I'm getting hungry. Um, please join us. Uh, I am, of course, Sorgatron on the Twitters, uh, Sorgatron.com, SorgatronMedia.com. For all the rest of the shows, please check out the Yik Yak video. The Yik Yak epilog is delisted from Google Play last week, so we figure it's pretty much the beginning of the end for them. So uh, we had a eulogy for them this week. And you can check out that video with Katie and uh, DJ Lunchbox uh, over at SorgatronMedia.com. Um, this is the show notes, not the outro. Live.awesomecast.net, <laughs> 6 30 p.m. Eastern Time every Tuesday night. Uh, please follow us all over the place on Twitter and uh, Facebook, Facebook groups, and Google. And please subscribe to us on all the links at awesomecast.net and share it with your friends. Big thanks for Michael Allen at Mike Allen PR for keeping up with me and uh, helping us with the notes and tweets all night long. And uh, and thank you, thank you, Doug. Thank you, Chilla, helping this uh, dad cast. I got some other ideas for maybe some special episodes here in the future as well. Um, that I'm gonna talk to you guys off air about. Um, thank you to our awesome chat room, Alex, John, everybody else in there, Wheels, Mike, Bobby, uh, Alex. They say Alex already. I don't know. And thank you. You've been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. You like professional wrestling? Want your discussions? No holds barred. Check out wrestlingmayhemshow.com for all the wrestling podcast flavor you can handle. <laughs>